In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist on the second Sunday of Epiphany. You join me here in St Thomas of Becket Church, Pagham, but wherever you are joining from, a very warm welcome to you. We are separated by time and space, but we are united in our prayer. This week we are trying something different. If you're watching this in the premiere at 10am uh, on Sunday the 17th of January, then you will watch this as though it is live. Um, there's no pausing or rewinding, I'm afraid, in the first watch. But if you join us at another time, then you are free to pause, to break, to come back and restart at any time. And the video will still stay online for quite a number of weeks. The other new thing that we are trying is a coffee time. So at the end of this service, you'll have time to boil the kettle, perhaps get a couple of biscuits out, and then join us, if you'd like, for coffee time on Zoom. This is something new for all of us, so we'll see how it goes, but you'll find the information you need for this call in uh, the communications email from your church, so either from Jane or from Trudy. And so now we gather in our prayer as we come in to meet Christ in both word and sacrament. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfil against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end, for I have told him that I am about to punish his house for ever, for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering for ever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said. Here I am, Eli said. What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 139 the response to the psalm is, Search me out, O God, and know my heart. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word is on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before, 
and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Alléluia, Alléluia. Alléluia, Alléluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. Alléluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe, because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. This Sunday we journey on rapidly in our Gospel readings from the baptism of Jesus last week to now the call of his first disciples. All four Gospel writers give account of Jesus calling men to follow him and it's clear that Jesus by this stage has already had some public ministry. He's known in the region as a teacher with great authority, a miracle worker with astonishing authority and now we see his authority at work as he calls young men to leave their livelihoods and become his apprentices learning the way of the kingdom. There's an excitement in our passage as Jesus is becoming known more widely and as he calls people to himself we see those people drawing other people to come and see what this rabbi is all about. Come and see says Philip to Nathaniel in verse 46 of John 1. Come and see. Philip is one of the first evangelists in the Gospels. So I'm going to speak this morning about evangelism. It's a word sadly laden with negative overtones much of the time. Those of you who watch the cartoon called The Simpsons will know the character of Ned Flanders. He's the archetype Christian evangelist, devout and sincere, with bad facial hair, systematically destroying relationships with his neighbours through totally inappropriate faith sharing. But in recent years, in the secular job market, evangelism has become the buzzword. Companies are falling over each other to hire marketing evangelists, digital evangelists, brand evangelists. And the reason is obvious. Everyone is trying to get in on the business of word of mouth marketing. 
especially with new social media, the best thing you can possibly do as a company is to get your customers to tell their own friends about your brand. There is nothing more persuasive and effective than friends telling their own friends that they tried something and found it was great. Modern companies may now be in on this, but it was God's idea from the beginning. So I want to encourage you this morning, no matter how long or short a time you might have been a follower of Jesus, please consider your call to be an evangelist. Let's look at the passage, John 1, verse 43. If you've uh, got a Bible you can have open in front of you, that would be really helpful. Jesus calls people to follow him, who in turn go and find people to follow him. So our reading, uh, verse 43, it begins with a man called Philip. Uh, Jesus already has two out of his 12 disciples. He's already got Andrew and Simon Peter, and they're from Bethsaida. The third disciple is Philip. He's not a random stranger. He's also from Andrew and Simon Peter's hometown, Bethsaida. It's not a coincidence. What Philip receives is encounter, transformational encounter. Philip meets Jesus face to face and hears that personal authoritative call on his life. And because of that encounter, Philip reaches the same incredible conviction as his two friends from his hometown. This man, Jesus, is God's king. He's the one we've all been waiting for. He's the one the prophets told us about. He's going to bring God's kingdom. And this is such good and exciting news. Philip automatically wants to tell others about Jesus. And he doesn't know very much. He just believes that God's promised saviour is here. And it's enough. It's enough for him to head off and find his friend Nathaniel. Philip says to Nathaniel, we have found the one. That word found in the Greek, I expect you know it, it's the word eureka. A great, exciting sense of discovery. Jesus is Philip's eureka. We have found God's promised saviour. Nathaniel, this is great news. He is Jesus of Nazareth. And Philip's friend Nathaniel is not very impressed with Philip's enthusiasm. Nathaniel has doubts. Nathaniel is a skeptic. At this point, I wonder whether the passage rings true for your experience. I hope you know what it is to encounter Jesus, who is alive today by his spirit. I hope you've heard his personal authoritative call over your life. I hope you've discovered him as your Eureka, the fulfillment of all God's promises. And then perhaps you've tried to share your discovery with a non-Christian friend and found that your friend is rather sceptical. Most people are very sceptical. And like Nathaniel, most people's objections are entirely reasonable. So, what's Nathaniel's problem? Philip says, we have found Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel replies, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a town with a really dud reputation. People from Nazareth were looked down on by everyone else. The Nazarenes were the butt of jokes. And I've got a lot of sympathy with this because I was born and raised in Essex, which doesn't always inspire people's confidence. When I was a teenager, I really wanted to get into Cambridge University. So I applied and I thought I had everything I needed. I've got the grades and the music and the sport and the community service. And they called me for interview and I was very nervous. Neither of my parents had been to university, so it was this big aspiration. And I showed up and I, I waited nervously outside and the man called me into his wood panelled study and he looked across at me and before I had a chance to sit down he said, So, you're an Essex girl, are you? Every country has its dud bit and Nazareth was the Essex of Judea. Nathaniel's question is a good one. Nazareth, how could the Messiah possibly be from a town with no status? And Philip's response is brilliant because he doesn't actually even try to answer the question. He says to his friend, come and see, come and meet him. You have to see for yourself, make up your own mind. This invitation to others to encounter Jesus Christ is the very best evangelism we can do. Come and encounter him for yourself.
That's the invitation. That's what we have to offer the world. Philip doesn't sit down with his friend and explain everything there is to know about the Old Testament and how well Jesus was from a royal city of David because he was born in Bethlehem. He could have done that, but we're not trying to answer everyone's questions perfectly. Becoming a Christian is not about understanding everything and signing up to a list of beliefs or rules of behaviour. These things are what many of our friends and colleagues think Christianity is. They think it's a set of beliefs, rules of behaviour, an invitation to join a fairly narrow-minded religious social club. Philip's instinct is that Nathaniel simply has to come and meet Jesus himself. And we must do the same, because our calling is to introduce our friends to a person, the person of Jesus. He who is alive and real, who speaks and changes lives, someone we ourselves have encountered and been transformed by, the one who is the fulfilment of all the promises of God the Father. So Philip says to his friend, come and see, meet this Jesus for yourself. When Nathaniel meets Jesus, it's a moment of supernatural revelation for him. It's a great reminder that we can play our part in pointing people to Jesus, but it's the Holy Spirit who does the miracle of grace. And Nathaniel, with most of his questions completely unanswered, says, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. There have been many, many hardships and struggles of this pandemic. Deep loss, devastating bereavement and trauma. It's been a profoundly painful time in our parishes and in our churches. But at that same time, the story of the church is also one of this being a season of fruitful evangelism. The pandemic might have stopped churches meeting physically, but it's not stopped new people meeting Jesus and joining his family. There's churches where many people have come to faith through online Alpha or Christianity Explored. There's book groups where people have invited their neighbours to discuss faith online. There's all manner of community outreach, ministries of serving people, feeding and clothing people, offering help with debt and unemployment and loneliness, where even in a time of pandemic, we've had opportunities not just to bless others with material provision, but also God has opened up conversations that have led people into faith in Jesus. So can I encourage you this morning to see in this scripture the grace and authority with which Jesus calls people to himself. May you each be reminded of your first love, that first eureka moment of discovering the Jesus who changes everything. And be inspired by the simplicity of our role, each one of us as evangelists in the kingdom of God. Would you pray that this week you'd have an opportunity to say to someone else, come and see, come and explore Jesus for yourself and make up your own mind. And with that opportunity, pray for God to give you the courage that when the moment arrives, you take that opportunity up to invite them. For many of us, that will be a scary prayer to pray. But let's pray it anyway. Amen. In God. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, creator of all that is seen and unseen, of all we can understand and all that is yet to be revealed. You have placed us in a universe of breathtaking splendour, with an ability to constantly surprise and amaze us. Hear us as we humbly come before you to thank you for your blessings and to seek your help and guidance in our lives. We come to you in simple trust and, as Jesus taught us, in the certain knowledge that you are our Heavenly Father and will listen to the prayers of us, your children. Strengthen Martin, Ruth and Will, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Support the work of Lucy, Bill, Colin and Roland in our parishes and lead us, your servants, to your promised kingdom. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments, and the fellowship of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you know how worried we are about the spread of COVID and the uncertainties of lockdown. Support us through these times to those where vaccinations will allow us to resume our common worship to you with music, song and fellowship. In our concentration on the pandemic, let us not forget the victims of war and famine in the world. Guide the world's leaders to work for peace in Yemen, Syria, Ethiopia and all other countries in conflict. Hear our prayers for Christians throughout the world who are suffering persecution for their faith. Soften the hearts of misguided people who inflict injury to your faithful and bring your message of peace and love to unbelievers. Bless the people of this country who keep our civilization running. The refuse collectors, transport workers, water, electricity and gas workers and any others who work throughout epidemics, bad weather and other challenges to ensure that we can depend on services being available at all times. We give thanks for the arrival of vaccines against COVID and ask for your blessing on the workers in the NHS who are enduring long hours under the most difficult of conditions in the knowledge that they are at risk of catching and spreading the virus. Give them strength in these stressful times. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Help us safely through this COVID-19 epidemic. Relieve the suffering, support those in isolation and comfort those ministering to the sick. Help us to remember that we cannot, by worrying, add one hour to our span of life and to remain positive amidst the doom and gloom of the world. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, particularly Lynette, Rosie, Terry, Barbara, Jean, Leela, June, Karen, Jim, Sheila, Robin, Gerald, Carol and Ian, John, Bruce, Richard, Morag. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, particularly Di Wilson. We remember also those who have passed away as a result of COVID-19. Conqueror of death, remember for good those who we love but see no longer. 
help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. In a moment of silence, we raise our personal supplications to you. As the psalmist says, there is not a word on our lips, but you know it altogether. Answer our prayers as you will, and help us to set our minds on divine things, not human things. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Thomas a Becket, St. Richard, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. 
the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of saint richard saint thomas a becket and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ.
the blood of Christ. Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for joining this service for the celebration of the Eucharist. I do hope that you are keeping well. Please do be in touch if there is anything that I can help with. Um, my contact details are on our website and on the Pews News or Weekly Sheet from your church. Um, that's also where you'll find all of the up-to-date information. And at this time, particularly information on our Lent course, which uh, I hope to start running from Ash Wednesday and the weeks that follow. Do take care and look after one another and yourselves. The Lord be with you. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.